Hello, friend. Welcome to Grandpa's Horror Stories. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and comment your own stories. The Surface For all my life, my mother has been deeply discomforted by swimming pools. Being as prideful as she is, she'd never describe it as a fear. But her panic eyes and stubborn protests to my brothers and I, getting swimming lessons or going to friends' pool parties clued us in from a young age. On the contrary, I always adored swimming. When we had visit my dad every other weekend, he'd let Chase and Ben and I go to the public town pool, never telling mom, of course, but she was being unreasonable. Dad would mutter with an eye roll. We were from the sweltering south of Georgia after all. Pools were everywhere. At the public pool, Dad would let us splash around and do whatever we wanted, trusting the lifeguards to do their job. For three young boys, it was heaven. We had spent long, hot days deeping off the high dive, searching for corns on the pool floor and having belly flop competitions that nearly always got an adult yelling at us. And luckily the lifeguards did do their job, because once, while having a breath-holding competition, my middle brother Ben lost consciousness underwater. I remember it so clearly, the clear, velvety coolness surrounding me, the pressurized hum in my ears, the sting in my open eyes, Watching as Ben's muscles went slack, his mouth opening lazily as he floated up to the surface. Seven years old and ignorant of the danger, I let myself enjoy the peaceful weightlessness of being suspended underwater for another moment. This was my favorite game, and I was ready to gloat. My oldest brother, Jason, had dropped out before either of us. So with Ben out, I was the winner. It wasn't until a second later, as I broke the surface, that Jason's scream and the lifeguard's whistle pierced into my reality. Luckily, Ben was completely fine, medically cleared by the MTs after being quickly rescued. Dad, Jason, and I desperately attempted to convince my mom that Ben being okay was indicative of the fact that her fears were unnecessary. After all, he ended up perfectly okay. But of course, Mom didn't buy it. She insisted that we should never underestimate the surface. Now, apparently just the sight of the rippling pool water was enough to trigger her neuroses. We all felt a little resentful over her weird phobia, but her fight with Dad for going behind her back was intense, to put it lightly, so we stopped going to the town pool. Instead, Mom let us play around in the creek near her place. It was rushing and alive, splashing just up to our knees. My brothers had fun making traps for crawfish and cooling off from the heat, but I couldn't help feeling that there was no comparison to the experience of sinking into the still, clear realm of a swimming pool. It wasn't until years later that I got the pleasure of being underwater once more. Dad had finally saved enough to buy a house of his own. My brothers and I Rejoiced, I was verging on teenagehood now, and both of them were already there. Not having to share a room in a two-bedroom apartment was much better for us. Plus, this place even had an in-ground pool. My brothers devolved into fantasies of throwing raging pool parties, impressing their bikini-clad crushes. But all I could think about was the smooth, relaxing pressure of chlorinated water surrounding me again. My mother's face went white when she brought us over to spend our first weekend there, but at our ages, she knew banning it just wouldn't work. Instead, she insisted we swear to follow her rules. 
Jason, Ben, and I were all sat down on Dad's ratty living room couch and given a stern talking to. My father looked quietly exasperated in the corner while Mom paced back and forth in front of us. We all must learn basic pool safety. No glass near the pool, no diving in shallow water, no breath holding competitions with one another this last. One was punctuated with an especially fierce glare. We must not fool around near the edge of the pool, lest we slip and crack our skulls open. We must not swim right after eating to avoid getting a cramp and drowning. We must not swim while intoxicated. Not that we should be getting drunk at our ages, she reminded, and most important of all, we must never, ever, ever go swimming in the pool alone. After all, we could never underestimate the surface, she stressed. We agreed quickly, of course. They weren't exactly complicated rules, and nothing we hadn't heard before from every lifeguard at the public pool who ever reprimanded us. Besides, it wasn't like her rules mattered much in Dad's house. My father may have become more compliant after the fight post Ben's accident, but he was still the more easygoing parent by far. Thus began our new life with our new pool. From the time we got to my Dad's to the time we left, we were swimming and splashing. Each Sunday night when Mom picked us up, our fingers were pruny and our hair stack of chlorine. She'd purse her lips, but keep quiet, holding on to the cliff ledge of puberty with the weight of constantly sniping divorced parents and increasingly distant older brothers. Dad's pool became my serenity. When I experienced the sensory deprivation of being held by the water, I could finally relax and shed the stress of the two weeks in between our visits. My brothers would have cannonball competitions and set up elaborate games, but I realized I was far more content to sit on the bottom in pure meditative bliss until my lungs ached and I had to return to the surface. After a couple months, however, the pool magic wore off of Jason and Ben. They'd still come swim with me sometimes, but often they wanted to go do other activities on Dad's custody days. I started to be dragged to the movie theater, laser tag, the baseball field. It frustrated me to lose my favorite activity, but I was outnumbered. One day, I felt I'd had enough following the rules of my parents. For the first time, I faked sick to avoid attending the basketball court with my brothers and father. Tad offered to reschedule their plans, but I assured him I just needed to rest. With my brothers cajoling him to bring them out, he overcame his hesitations. I watched their car drive off with mixed excitement and rebellious anxiety spiking my heart rate. I stepped out into the backyard, watching the gleaming reflections on the surface of the pool. It was a perfect day to swim, a beating sun with a slight breeze, my toes created infinite ripples as I made contact with the water. I slid in, enjoying the sensation of my body temperature reaching thermal equilibrium with the water. Pure, unadulterated relaxation. It was up to my collarbone now, and it was time for my favorite part. I took a deep breath and through my nose, then exhaled slowly through my mouth. I had learned that this slowed my heart rate and let me stay under for longer. When I was sufficiently calm, I filled my lungs with air and dived to the bottom. Gentle pressure surrounded me, better than any weighted blanket. 
I heard the low, staticky buzz of my inner ear adjusting to the depth. Misshapen bubbles swirled from my nose, and I opened my eyes to a wavy, cool-toned world. No need to exhaust myself on my first dive of the afternoon, I lazily determined. I work up to spending a long stretch down here. Slowly, I headed back to the surface. I let my eyes close as I floated upwards, thanks to the air I still had stored. All that existed was the smooth movement of my body through the liquid world until my head collided with something right above me. Stunned, I nearly inhaled water. My head throbbed, and it took a second to realize which way he was up and which was down. When I finally got a grip on my surroundings, I looked to the sky. What had I hit? I was in the middle of the pool. There was nothing around to bump into. The only thing above me was the endless blue sky. More gingerly this time, I reached my arm upwards and hit something. Something on the surface of the water. Something completely invisible, but rock hard. Something that wouldn't let me reach the air. In shock, I swam to the shallow end, feeling along what should be the surface of the pool. The top of the water rippled lazily in the breeze I could see, but every inch of it was unyielding to my touch. The rushing and bubbling of my movements started to sound hostile. I can't breathe down here. My racing heartbeats were becoming a deafening pounding that reverberated through my body. I could feel myself starting to lose air as I panicked and the need for oxygen became even more profound. How much longer do I have left? I braced myself against the surface. I clawed with fingers that were beginning to prune. I hit and kicked, limbs moving in slow motion through the water. I stood in the shallowest part and shoved with my shoulders, like a catalyst carrying the world but no matter what I did, I was encased in the depths. My lungs tightened and relented in painful spasms, begging for me to inhale, unprepared for the liquid climate. Finally, I had nothing left to do but scream for help, praying that someone would come home early to find me here, but knowing from experience that the pool silences any cries, is this what drowning felt like? Would my most peaceful space be my undoing? What force would condemn me to a watery grave? I stared up at a bright sky that was starting to blur. My ears were ringing now so loud that the sound of my heartbeat didn't seem so loud anymore. My body felt almost numb. Sensory deprivation again? always a talent of the pool. For the first time, it wouldn't relieve me of my stresses. I could feel myself losing consciousness. My lungs were so devoid of air that I was sinking slowly to the tiled floor. In a last dizzy moment, I raised a hand and the tip of my screaming. All I remember is waking with my cheek pressed against rough cement, gulping down heavy, tight mouthfuls of air, my skin frying in the afternoon sun, my family's panicked cries upon returning home, my face still turned towards the innocuously gleaming reflections on the pool's surface. I told my family, of course, this was met with unsure glances between one another and my father's whispered question to my doctor. Was there maybe some damage to his brain? I was still a kid, after all, and it wasn't improbable to anyone that I'd manufactured an imaginary evil to deal with my accidental drowning. After all, the pool was still just a normal pool or it wasn't improbable to anyone except my mother. After agitatedly repeating my story at the hospital until my sore throat gave out, I was told 
to go home and rest, lying in bed that night with every light on. Frightened of even the cup of water on my desk, I flinched as mom crept in. She sat on my bed and rested her hand softly on mine. I met her eyes, loving but deadly serious. You were lucky this time. It had mercy on you. That won't happen again. I tried to warn you. Her gaze intensify, and I could see that her fear was rooted in knowledge of dangers I'd only just seen a glimpse of. Never underestimate the surface.